Welcome to Aero 1020 Theory of Flight. This video presentation will include a brief review of the syllabus, uh, then we'll go over aircraft vocabulary, and we'll finish up with a discussion about aircraft category and class. The review of the syllabus will include the required textbook and materials, the course requirements, and how your grade will be determined. And we'll also have a discussion about academic integrity. The syllabus includes a brief description of the course. Topics include basic aerodynamics with an emphasis on lift, weight, thrust, and drag, and also the moments acting on an airplane in flight. Remember, class participation is required. I'll log into D2L on a regular basis at least three times a week. Um, in addition to class participation, there'll be four tests and two research papers, a final exam, and also a project to build, design, build, and fly a balsa wood glider. The objectives uh, include the ability to apply concepts from math and physics to aviation and the ability to analyze and interpret atmospheric and aerodynamic data. The knowledge that you gain in this class will be used to solve real-world problems by designing and flying a small balsa wood glider. The ability to effectively communicate technical uh, content using appropriate aviation terminology will also be demonstrated when you write your two research papers in APA format. There are no prerequisites or co-requisites in this course, and the required textbook is the FAA Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, otherwise known as the PHAC, and the APA, or American Psychological Association's Publication Manual, 7th edition. The PHAC can be downloaded free of charge at the Federal Aviation Administration website and the American Psychological Association publication manual will be needed to write your two research papers. Supplemental materials include uh, balsa wood, glue, modeling clay, and a utility knife to build the balsa wood glider project. The, there is a, a complete description of the project in the contents section of D2L along with a description of the uh, materials that you'll need to complete the project. Grades will be determined using a point system. Class participation and discussion posts will count for 10 points. Four test, uh, the four tests will uh, count for 40 points. The papers, the two research papers and the glider project will count for 30 points. And the final exam will count for the final 20 points for a total of 100 points. Uh, here is a, a table with the uh, letter grades. And uh, also, please note that incomplete grades will only be given in extenuating circumstances, such as illness or other uncontrollable circumstances. Uh, just remember that the failure to make up work or turn in required work uh, does not provide the basis for uh, an incomplete grade. Grades and assignments will be provided within a week of the assignment submission date. And Email responses uh, will be provided within 24 to 48 hours after the date and time of the email or on the next school day if received on Friday after 5 p.m. All assignments should be submitted to the Dropbox. I cannot accept assignments by email. And all assignment deadlines will be listed in the Dropbox and on the calendar in D2L. The Following uh, ground rules are expected of all students. Uh, you must learn how to navigate in the learning management system, other, otherwise known as D2L. Uh, you should address technical problems immediately with IT uh, help desk, and you can send them an email at uh, help at mtsu.edu. Uh, and remember, be respectful to your instructor and peers. Refrain from derogatory statements. 
Again, class participation is required. Uh, you are expected to log in to D2L at least three times a week, if not more, and adhere to all due dates and deadlines. Uh, use the Ask the Class discussion board when you have a question about course content and communicate with the instructor. Uh, frequently check the home page for important announcements from the instructor. Academic integrity is, uh, and honesty is something that uh, Middle Tennessee State University takes very seriously. Uh, remember, when you submit your work, especially the uh, research papers, you will be submitting it into a system known as Turnitin.com. Turnitin.com is a system that checks your work against other work that has been submitted into the system for plagiarism. Uh, you're expected to double check your work to make sure that there is no plagiarism. Uh, make sure to use your own words when writing your research paper. Paraphrase uh, when necessary, but again, make sure that you're using your own words and you're not just copying uh, the words from another paper or from your research. Students who are guilty of academic misconduct are subject to disciplinary actions. That can include uh, an F or a zero on a paper, uh, an F for the course, and you could also be uh, expelled uh, from the university. So please make sure when submitting your work that it is your own work that you are not uh, copying and pasting the work of someone else. Aero 1020 Theory of Flight is all about how airplanes fly. And there's a joke in aviation that it's magic that causes an airplane to fly. As you can see in this illustration, there's some very important magic going on around the wings, some more magic going on around the uh, tail of the aircraft, as well as at the engines. But it's a little bit more than magic that uh, causes an airplane to fly. In Aero 1020, you'll learn all about the math and the physics and the science that makes an airplane fly. So how does an airplane that weighs thousands of pounds get off of the ground and maintain flight? Well, it's a lot more than magic. Before we can study the science, math, and physics behind powered flight, you'll need to know some terminology, and you'll need to know about the parts of an airplane. And you'll get to know this illustration. It is a transport aircraft, and uh, the parts of the airplane are labeled, uh, starting with the fuselage. The fuselage is the body of the aircraft. And the fuselage is uh, where all of the other parts are attached or are contained. The wings are another important part. Uh, and then the tail section, which is known as the empennage, it includes the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. On the aft section of the horizontal stabilizer, you'll have the elevators. And the elevators control movement around the lateral axis. Uh, in other words, it controls pitch. The rudder is attached to the aft section of the vertical stabilizer, and that controls movement around the uh, vertical axis, and that movement is called yaw. On the aft section of the wings, you have flaps, and flaps are used to uh, produce more lift and more drag. Uh, and then you have the aileron. Uh, ailerons are uh, designed to move the aircraft around the, the longitudinal axis. Uh, that movement is known as roll. We'll discuss all of that. Uh, this aircraft pictured here is a uh, transport aircraft, and most transport aircraft have what are called slats on the leading edge of the wings. Um, slats produce more lift as well as spoilers. Spoilers are designed to get rid of lift. 
Uh, we'll discuss the need for that in uh, transport aircraft, uh, but for now, uh, the most important parts are the fuselage, the wings, flaps, ailerons, the horizontal stabilizer with the elevator, and the vertical stabilizer with the rudder. This is an illustration of a small aircraft, a propeller-driven aircraft. So the difference between this aircraft and the one that we just looked at is the form of propulsion. Uh, this aircraft has a propeller. The transport aircraft that we looked at previously was a jet-powered aircraft or a jet-propelled aircraft, um, so it did not have the propeller. But the other parts of the aircraft are exactly the same. Uh, you have the fuselage, you have the wings, flaps and ailerons, the vertical and horizontal stabilizers with the elevator and the rudder. So all airplanes have basically the same parts uh, with some uh, minor differences. Now when discussing airplane category and airplane class, it's important to distinguish between uh, airman certification or aircraft certification. Airman certification basically means how a pilot is certified and what type of aircraft, category and class of aircraft, an airman is certified to fly. So when we're uh, discussing aircraft category and class as it applies to airman certification, airplane is a category, rotorcraft is a category, powered lift, glider, lighter than air, powered parachute, and weight control, weight shift control aircraft. Those are all categories. And then within those categories, you have single engine land or C class, multi engine land or C class for airplane. So most of you are working on getting your private pilot's license. And your private pilot's license will include the category and class of aircraft that you're certified to fly. And most of you will be certified to fly a airplane, single engine land aircraft. Okay, so that is how we uh, discuss category and class when it comes to airman certification. Aircraft category and class when discussing aircraft certification is a little different. Notice that category as it applies to aircraft certification includes normal, utility, acrobatic, transport, limited, restricted, experimental, and provisional. So the category of an aircraft as it applies to aircraft certification has to do with how the aircraft will be used. The class of a normal category aircraft can be airplane, rotorcraft, glider, balloon, land plane, and seaplane class. So it's a little confusing. It's important for you to remember that when it comes to aircraft certification, categories include normal, utility, acrobatic, and so on. So how is this aircraft going to be used? The class includes airplane, rotorcraft, glide, balloon, a glider, balloon, land plane, or seaplane class. So here are some examples of category, aircraft category, as it applies to airman certification. That's important to remember. A lighter than air uh, category includes an airship, otherwise known as a dirigible or a blimp. Uh, gliders are uh, unpowered aircraft. So these are aircraft that does not have a power plant. The powered lift category aircraft is designed to take off vertically. And airplane multi-engine C is an airplane that has more than one engine and is designed to land in water. Here are two examples of category and class again as it applies to airman certification. So this is a rotorcraft category and the class is helicopter. 
on the left side of the slide. On the right side, you have an airplane, and it has a single engine, and it's designed to uh, land on the ground rather than on water. So it's airplane, single engine, land. On the left-hand side of this slide, you see a balloon. So that would be the class of this aircraft. The category would be lighter than air. So the lighter than air category, balloon class, as it applies to airman certification. On the right side is an air transport aircraft. Uh, and this, even though it is a very large aircraft, is still known as an airplane multi-engine land because it has more than one engine. It's designed to land on the ground and it's an airplane. Again, remember that this applies to airman certification, not aircraft certification. If we were talking about aircraft certification, this aircraft on the right hand side would be a category, a transport category and the class would be airplane. On the left hand side of this slide you see a weight shift category aircraft. Okay. That's uh, otherwise known as an ultralight. And on the right side you see a, a powered parachute. Parachute is the same type of parachute used uh, by skydivers. Uh, the difference is that this parachute is attached to a uh, engine which propels it forward. Here we have an example of a gyroplane on the left and a gyrodyne on the right. Uh, these are both rotorcraft uh, category aircraft as it applies to airman certification. Uh, and the gyroplane has a rotor, uh, but the difference is the rotor is not powered by an engine. The rotor uh, spins as the aircraft starts to move forward. And that's what creates lift. Uh, notice on the gyroplane there's a pusher propeller with an engine. Uh, that's what propels the aircraft forward. So as the air, aircraft or the gyroplane uh, moves forward due to the thrust produced by the pusher propeller, the uh, rotor at the top of the gyroplane starts to spin and produces lift. On the right side you see a gyrodyne. Uh, the difference between a gyroplane and a gyrodyne is that the rotor on a gyrodyne is powered. Now here you see a couple of examples of airplanes that are actually flown at the Middle Tennessee State University Flight School. The top left side is a Diamond DA-40, which is used for private pilot training, instrument training, and commercial training. On the right side is a Piper Seminole. That's a multi-engine aircraft used for multi-engine ratings and also to train our multi-engine instructors. So remember, as it applies to airman certification, the Diamond DA-40 is an airplane category, single engine land class. The Piper Seminole is an airplane category, multi-engine land class. When discussing aircraft certification, the Diamond DA-40 would be a normal category airplane class. The Piper Seminole would also be a normal category airplane class. So let's do a little knowledge check. The aircraft on the left, what is the category and class as it applies to airman certification? That would be an airplane, single engine, land. How about the center? The aircraft in the center, category and class. Again, that's a glider. And remember, gliders don't have separate classes. So that's a glider category as it applies to airman certification. And on the right, we have a rotorcraft category helicopter class. Again, these all apply to airmen certification.
Another thing that we need to learn in theory of flight is the movement around the different axes of the aircraft. There are three axes around which the aircraft moves. The first one is the lateral axis, and that is from wingtip to wingtip. And the movement around the lateral axis is known as pitch. The second axis is a longitudinal axis. That's from the nose back to the tail. And the movement around the longitudinal axis is known as roll. And the third axis is a vertical axis. It's a straight line up and down through the center. Uh, movement around that axis is known as yaw. Uh, here's another illustration of the three axes of movement of an aircraft. The longitudinal axis from the nose back to the tail. The lateral axis from wingtip to wingtip and the vertical axis, also known as the normal axis in this illustration, is a straight line through the center of the aircraft. Again, movement around the longitudinal axis is known as roll, around the lateral axis is known as pitch, and around the vertical axis is known as yaw. Another term that you need to know is relative wind. Relative wind is the direction of the wind as it hits the aircraft flying through the air. The angle between the relative wind and the cord line of the airfoil is known as the angle of attack. Now, cord line is another term that you should remember. Cord line is from the leading edge of the airfoil back to the trailing edge or in other words from the front, a straight line from the front of the airfoil back to the uh, rear of the airfoil or aft. So the angle between the cord line and the relative wind is known as the angle of attack. And the angle of attack can vary based on the uh, speed of your aircraft. Uh, high speed requires a low angle of attack. Slower speeds require a high angle of attack. Here is another illustration of angle of attack. Again, the wing cord line is from the leading edge of the airfoil back to the trailing edge. It's a straight line. The angle between the cord line of the airfoil and the relative wind is known as the angle of attack. Now the four forces acting on an aircraft in flight are lift, which is opposed by weight or gravity, thrust, which is opposed by drag. When lift equals weight and thrust equals drag, the airplane is in straight, unaccelerated flight. When lift is greater than weight, the airplane is climbing. When lift is less than weight, the airplane is descending. When thrust is greater than drag, the airplane is accelerating or speeding up. When thrust is less than drag, the airplane will be decelerating or slowing down. That's the end of the first presentation of Aero 1020 Theory of Flight. If you have any questions, you can post them on the discussion board, ask the class, or you can send me an email. The next presentation will be all about aircraft vocabulary.